Oh, that's me, sitting on a windowsill. I'm an unfinished project. I'm 90% done. All I need is some final weathering details, maybe a little glue. But no, I just sit here, day after day, neglected for weeks on end. How did I get to this sorry state, you ask? Well, to answer that, we'll have to go back to where it all started. Welcome back to Robot Roundup. Today we're scratch building a frog robot, inspired by the illustration work of artist Guznag. He painted an awesome series of robot frogs, and I want to build a similar one. Ready? Let's go. For the main body, I'm using the top half of a wooden egg. I drill holes for where the eyes will attach. I've used these plastic capsules in most of my recent builds. Thick steel wire will support the eye stalks. I sketch the outline of the mouth onto the egg and then use a compass divider to redraw it on a piece of EVA craft foam. EVA craft foam is really easy to cut as long as you have a pretty fresh blade. But this time I don't need an exact cut, and a little bit of imprecision can add some character to the model. I do a test fit and then glue the foam to the wood using E6000 glue, which works well with foam. I had to tape it down while the glue dried. Then I add a strip of self-adhesive foam around the base. A plastic end cap is a decent fit for the egg. I'm using round wooden beads as leg joints. I drill holes and add lengths of thick wire. Then I cover the wire with styrene tubes. I want the legs to look like pneumatic pistons. I've reinforced the base and added a layer of foam as a seal for snugly fitting into the body. I found some plastic toy earrings at a thrift store that I'm using as greebly detail. I always sand found plastic bits in order for the glue to adhere better. I like robots that look like they're built around some kind of chassis with parts of the raw inner workings exposed, so I'm adding some more random details. Now I'm cutting wooden beads for the hands and feet. I drill holes for the fingers and toes. Some heart-shaped beads and plastic pins from one of those 3D pin art toys will form the fingers and toes. I glue a heart to the end of a pin. They look like little magic wands. Then I make a few small wire coils, which I'll slide over the pins. I do a quick test fit of the completed feet. Now I'm pretending to search for the right size of metal tube, but this is a completely contrived shot. Oh, there it is. I take a thin styrene strip and tape it to the metal tube. Coil it around. I'm actually making some springs for the legs. Then I use a heat gun, which sets the styrene to the shape of the tube, which is why it needed to be metal. For the eyes, I'm experimenting with a few different size shapes. I'm trying to find the right combination of a plastic cap that will fit in the capsule, as well as the right size of lens. I wanted red eyes, so I painted a few of the pieces. 
really like the look of these. They remind me of a Fresnel lens. I dry brush some metallic paint to hit some of those edges. To attach the lens, I'm going to fill some of this gap with epoxy. I tape the lens in place. Then I mix some two-part JB Weld. And ease it into the seam. This turned out okay, but if I could do it over, I would just epoxy it in four or five points instead of filling the whole seam. It's a little messy. I'm using another strip of adhesive-backed craft foam to cover the seam around the lens. Now I'm detailing the body with some greeblies and panels. I added a foam back panel, now I'm making a fake hinge out of styrene tube slices. I've also added some more panels and other details out of epoxy putty. I'm using plastic gems as rivets. I've already marked out where I want the rivets to go. Then I add small dabs of super glue and stick on the gems. A sharp knife blade can pluck them out of the tray. I also glue the eyes into place. Now I'm gluing on an aircraft wheel as the frog's ear thingy. I'm making a handle for the back panel out of wire. It goes in kind of like a thick staple. Now I'm using craft grating to make a back vent panel. I also added a few more small panels out of sheet styrene and some little adhesive circles. Now it's on to the arms, which I'm making out of a few different beads. I thread a wire between the beads. I don't trust just gluing them together. Arms especially need to be sturdy because they'll be the first thing to break if the figure tips over or falls. This is some Lego tubing, which I'm using for the arm hinge. This pen I was using just happened to have the right size cap. So, a wooden rod will form the actual arm hinge. I want the arms to be movable like an action figure. I drill and file a hole for the joint. It's nice and snug. Use the guidelines on my cutting mat to find a good angle for the forearm joint. I make the hands just like I did the feet, except the fingers are a bit longer and I added thumbs. I like the clasp on these toy earrings, so I'm snipping them off and gluing them to the back of the hands for some extra detail. There's a lot of different textures from all the materials I've used, so I'm going to give it one overall texture using Mr. Surfacer 500 that will tie it all together. It's a bit like a thin down putty or thick paint. I stipple it on with an old brush, which creates a nice cast iron texture. I should have done this before texturing, but I'm taking a soldering iron and melting some scratches and dents into the foam. This creates toxic fumes, so I'm wearing a ventilator mask and running an exhaust fan. 
everything is assembled and primed. You can see the uniform texture now. I've collected a bunch of these disposable contact lens containers. They make handy little paint or glue pots. They even have a little grippy handle. The painting process is pretty straightforward, not a whole lot to explain. I'm putting the paint on pretty thick because it doesn't matter if the texture is globby. It's kind of what I want. Yeah, I meant to do that. To unify the colors, I make sure that some of the base color is added to any new mixes. I paint some of the panels a different color to make it look like they were added or replaced later. I paint it kind of patchy for a worn look. I want an old metal look for the fingers and toes. They're given a dark base metal, followed by a silver dry brushing. paint chipping effect, I'm using a small brush with a reddish brown paint. Using the edge of the brush, I think of it as a sharp tool that's actually scratching at some of the raised edges and revealing the old worn metal. I had to make a last minute change. I thought of a better way to attach the leg springs, so I added a bracket for the spring to attach to. Back to weathering. Here's a trick that was used by ILM on the original Star Wars models. You paint a dark wear mark over a lighter mark, and it looks like a big scratch or a blaster mark that tore through several layers of material. For a heavier chipping effect, I used a sponge with the same color. Well, that's when I got shelled. Christmas, New Year's, even Valentine's Day have passed, and here I sit. I just want to be finished. Is that so hard to ask? Or throw me away. Don't leave me in the way. What is that? Okay, what's going on? We need to finish this guy. I make an oil wash with burnt umber oil paint thinned with mineral spirits. I brush it on pretty heavy and let it flow into all the small cracks and crevices. And I dab a paper towel over some of the raised areas. I do this in stages for all the different sections.
Then I target some of the deeper recesses with a tighter second pass. Lastly, I add some rust streaks by wetting an area with thinner and dabbing on some oil paint. And then brushing it downward with a soft brush. All that's left to do is glue the feet on. And with that, I think we're finally done. Thanks for watching. Robots rule, and so do you. See you at the next roundup. Thank <laughs> you.